Uh, so my name is James Tierney, and what we're going to talk about today for about 15 minutes is being an educator and why it's not just teaching. But I need a volunteer. And I tell my students, I bring them to the wall in front of the class, uh, wherever it is, and I say, all right, this class, I'm going to push you to your limits. And I say, all right, uh, Jose, I need you to take this post-it note, and I need you to put it as high as you can on this wall. Awesome. And then I ask the class, what did I ask Jose to do? Put it as high as he can. So if I ask him to put this higher, what should he not be able to do? But can he put it higher? Okay, sure, you can take a chair. Does that, if that's what you want to do. But I'm asking you, Jose, can you please put the post-it note higher than that one? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Wow, that's not bad. Now, if I asked you again, <laughs> Jose, can you put this post-it note as high as you can on that wall? Oh, look at that. That's the same wall. That's bad. I promise I won't ask you again. <laughs> I promise. That, it, awesome. And I say, everyone, give Jose a round of applause for participating. First day of class. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you probably want to put this up. We don't want anyone falling. It's a good spot for it. And so the reason why I start off my first day class, uh, oh, I can stay here. There, you probably can't see me that well, but I want to illustrate this. So I start off my first day of class with this activity. And I tell them, look, economics can be boring. I'm going to make it exciting as, I, as exciting as I can. But part of my job is to motivate you to be interested in economics. Because even though you don't know it, you're an economist already. Because when I asked Jose to put this as high as he can, did he put it as high as he could? No. But what did he do? He weighed costs and benefits. The marginal cost, the marginal benefit from it. But until someone pushes you and says, actually, Think of these additional benefits. Let's push you a little harder. Can Jose put it higher? Yes, he can. And so the first term paper I ask them to hand in, I say, hand me your best stuff. Is that going to be the best stuff they're going to hand in? No, because they can do better. And that's what I want to talk about today in this talk, is just how can we motivate our students through maybe a simple activity like this in the first day of class, or through a couple of visuals that I post in my Facebook group and a few other things. So this is the definition of an educator when I threw this into Google. I said, all right, uh, what's an educator? And it says, a person who provides instruction or education, a teacher. Uh, I disagree. And so what are other terms that I would want to put in under an educator? What would you guys like to see as a definition of what a true educator is? Role model, perfect. What else? What was that? A mentor, definitely a mentor. A life coach, a motivator. a motivator, a rock star, a student, a, a erotic. <laughs> I wasn't, I was not here yesterday, but I was told that everything goes back to that. <laughs> Risk taker. All of these words fall under being an educator. And everyone here today wants to be the best educator that they can be. Now, I could spend probably hours going through each one of them talking about being a mentor, talking about being a rock star, talking about being this, being that. Uh, I don't. I have 15 minutes. So what I want to do is I want to spend some time talking about being a motivator in the classroom. And it all starts from that first day of getting your students excited to be in economics. Does it have to be anything about economics? No, but if they see that your class has some value added and they're interested and they're thinking of it and they're telling their friends how awesome it was to be in that class, they're going to show up more. That's where they're going to learn the stuff. That's where that value added is going to come. So I do that demonstration. Class is kind of like, all right. And then I show this clip, very short clip, and I say this. Come on, do it, you worthless piece of crap. Please, please, I just want to go home. You said that last 
And I tell them, I say, you know what? How many people in here, and I'll pretend like this is my class, how many people in here have ever hired a personal trainer? Few people have hired a personal trainer. So the personal trainer comes in the first day and says, all right, we're going to do some push-ups. And you get down, you do three push-ups, you stand up, you say, oh, my arms are sore. And your personal trainer says, okay, well, that's good enough for today, and lets you go home. Are you going to be happy with that personal trainer? No. You just paid him $50 to have you do three push-ups and not motivate you. Well, really, what we are is we are the student's personal trainer for their education, for their brain. And so when they say, hey, I'm tired, I can't get this done, this is the best I can do, we need to be that educator and that motivator to say, actually, you can. You can do that. And some students are going to push back. But if you bring this up the first day of class, you tell them, this is my job. This is what you're paying me for. I'm going to be a motivator for you. They're going to appreciate it. At least the majority of them will, I think. I like to think. I try to focus all of my communication with my students as motivational. So every email I send out, I want to make sure that there's some sort of tone of motivation in it. Get this done. This is what we learned about. Here are some things that we can tie to it. Motivate them to be interested in the material and also just motivate them to be a good student. The more we can get them to realize the value of education and of our class, the better we're going to have our students perform overall. And it all starts with just actually getting them there and getting them excited in what we're doing and showing our passion. With that passion, you're going to let the students know that you're there for them and that you care about them. And they're going to feel that passion. If you're up there, you're saying, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to be helping you. I'm going to be pushing you along the way. I'm not going to let you do anything less than your best. Yeah, you're going to have those 10%, 20% of your students that are going to push back. But they're going to push back no matter what you did. You're going to have that 10, 20% that was going to give you their best anyway. And so we look at that middle, and that middle is where we're going to make a difference, and we're going to have these students saying, wow, like, I'm excited. I'm pumped up. I want to come to this class. I want to learn. And then, oh, I don't want to miss this other class because education, education, that's where we're going to see a big difference. And motivation doesn't, I mean, I really haven't done anything about economics, right? So it, and it doesn't have to be economics. And so a lot of people are like, well, it takes up some time. But really, the activity I did, emails I send out, take five minutes of class time. I think there's a lot of value to it. I have a Facebook group, and I have all my students from each of my classes. So I teach two classes, intro, micro, intro, to macro at Penn State, uh, 360, 300 people. And I invite them to a Facebook group. And a lot of times, I'll post motivational things in the Facebook group, along with when assignments are due or answer questions or anything like that, just to keep in the back of their mind that I'm there to teach them economics, but I'm also there to be their educator, to be their mentor, to be their role model. You know, We hope that most of these students that we have have these mentors and these role models in their life already, but that still shouldn't stop us from being an additional one. And so this is one I found this week, and you may have seen it. Uh, it's a beautiful Venn diagram, and it just talks about different things. And I wanted to share it today, because uh, I shared it with my students. I got a lot of positive feedback. Like 10% of the people in the group liked it. A lot of people commented on it. And it has nothing to do with economics. It's all just kind of showing my students that I care about not just the economic stuff they're going to put on the final exam, but also them as students, as people, as hopefully future educators like we all are here. And so the first circle is everything in the world that you love. Think of everything in the world that you love. The second circle, now we think of everything that you're great at. The third part of the diagram is everything that the world needs. And the fourth one is you're paid for it. And so if we think about it, that's the goal, right? You want to love what you do. You want to be great at it. The world needs it. And you're paid for it. But sometimes you can't get all four. And so I show this to my students, and I'm like, well, if you love it, you're great at it. That's your passion. So we want you to be passionate in what you're doing. If you love it, the world needs it. That's a mission that you're on. If you're great at it, you're paid for it, that's what your profession will be. The world needs it and you're paid for it, that might just be a vocation. But what we're really focusing on in education is to help them find 
a spot where it's all four of these. They love it, the world needs it, they're great at it, they're paid for it. Is it gonna be economics for the majority of these students? Probably not. But should we be turned off by that? No, because we're economists and we know that we don't need just a whole bunch of economists. It would be a very awful world if we only had economists in the world. And so I, tell, I told them on the Facebook page, I think this was Tuesday, I said, I said, look, look at this. Obviously where we wanna be is here. You wanna find something. And has anybody seen this before and know what we can call this middle part where you love it, you're great at it, the world needs it, you're paid for it? <laughs> Not economics. <laughs> I think economics is a very small like little circle over there. This is great, I was, I was so glad, I, was ho I thought like everyone had seen this before me and I was gonna bring this here and no, no, no. And so I told my students, I said, why don't you find your purpose? It doesn't have to be economics, whatever it is, but find your purpose. And I could post an article in economics, I could post a funny meme, I could post a, a cartoon that I think is hilarious in Facebook and I'll get some interaction with it. I posted this, I had like 35 people out of the 160 some that have joined it that liked this. And there was a conversation about, that's really cool, you know, oh, you know, I was having a bad day, this is uplifting, and anything like that. And so it has nothing to do with economics. But I think that if we can spend just a little bit of time motivating our students, and it can be through simple activities, it could be through just our communication, uh, we'll see increases in attendance, We'll see our projects being handed in with a little more pizzazz, and we'll just have better overall students, not just for us, but for our colleagues in different departments, and hopefully better workers as we uh, grow older and we need this younger generation to take care of us.